We have breaking news today as Charles Gasparino has a new piece in the New York Post regarding the crypto industry, and you're going to want to hear what he has to say. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. And on this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. And make sure to drop a like on this video if you find any value here. And don't forget to sign up for Voyager to get your $25 in free Bitcoin with $100 in crypto trades. Link down in the description. Let's take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive into his latest publication here. It's a good one. We are down about a percent from yesterday to $2.12 trillion. Bitcoin down to 47,600, Ethereum back down under 3,400, Cardano at 234, XRP holding steady at $1.07, still in the sixth spot as Solana is back down to around $150. Now, we've been following Charles Gasparino this week, uh, obviously reporting for Fox Business, and has talked multiple times regarding crypto and the Ripple case in particular. Now he has taken to the New York Post to write about Ripple, about the SEC, about Gensler and Clayton, and there's some really good stuff in this article. I'm going to link everything down below. I'll link uh, Gasparino's Twitter. Make sure you're following him. Uh, check out the article on the New York Post. Uh, it's a really good one. We'll go through it in detail here. But again, show your support. Make sure you're liking and following uh, him. That way he knows and has the uh, insight on you know just how big of a community this is and how much interest there is in the community to have more investigative reporting in this space. Now, here's his piece. Still young crypto industry could grow stronger if the SEC allows it to thrive. The noise surrounding the $2.2 trillion crypto industry often drowns out the reality that we are on the verge of something revolutionary. Things go right, crypto and the blockchain technology could usher in the next internet revolution. Things are now going terribly wrong. The U.S. stands the very real chance of killing this business here by driving digital innovation overseas and seeding advancements to other countries, including Communist China. If you missed yesterday's video, I'll link it up top and down below as well, so you can see more about just how the SEC is driving innovation overseas. Why? Because our regulators, mainly those at the SEC, are either too feckless or too turf-hungry, or a combination of both, to understand the dangers in their asinine approach to overseeing a nation and important technology. Yes, there is a need to regulate the crypto world. Hype in cryptocurrency seems to pop up every day. Even Manny Pacquiao has one. Uh, and I spent some time in the Philippines. Big time, uh, you know, influence over there. And so seeing, you know, he is a politician over there. So to have his own cryptocurrency, very interesting. Um, comment below if you're Filipino and have any thoughts on Pacquiao's um, crypto. Criminals use digital coin for payment. Meanwhile, the currencies themselves often seem divorced from improving the all-important blockchain technology that could revolutionize how we buy and sell stuff. But recall the internet of 1995, the time of the Netscape IPO when the digital revolution was about to explode. Criminals certainly used online venues, and still do, to do bad stuff. There was lots of hype. And then, of course, don't forget the bubble that exploded around 2000, causing significant small investor losses. Yet the SEC, then run by Arthur Levitt and aided by savvy enforcement officials and policymakers in the government, took a common sense approach to regulating what author Michael Lewis dubbed the new, new thing. It wasn't perfect, but overall they chose a framework that allowed innovation to flourish, where everyone knew the rules of the road. The result is what we enjoy today, the creation of some of the most important and profitable companies the world has ever seen. Contrast that with the regulatory chaos surrounding crypto. There are no set regulations. Agencies compete over turf and debate legal minutia. The SEC says it wants to protect the public from fraud, but it has done so through capricious enforcement actions that fail to protect innovators. Pay attention here. This is important. The people who created Ripple Labs learned this firsthand. Before the end of the Trump administration, Jay Clayton 
then head of the SEC, filed charges that Ripple had violated securities laws by failing to register sales of the XRP cryptocurrency as a security, along with the necessary disclosures. The lawsuit sent shockwaves through the digital currency business. Ripple was founded in 2012 and grew into one of the largest digital platforms and innovator in cross-board payments involving crypto and currencies. The case stopped Ripple's domestic business in its tracks. Various crypto exchanges delisted XRP. Its value tanked. As for the heart of the case, why is XRP a security while the SEC deems cryptos like Bitcoin and Ether mere commodities and outside its jurisdiction? The rationale goes something like this. Ripple continues to use XRP to build out its platform. Ethereum no longer uses Ether for financing. That makes XRP a security and Ether something else, the SEC says. I'm no crypto expert, nor am I a securities lawyer, but in talking to both, it's pretty clear that this case has some holes. Other than the missing disclosure, where's the investor ripoff? There isn't any, according to the SEC charges. While Ripple is fighting the XRP, some XRP investors have launched a class action claiming that the SEC has been capricious in its enforcement action, picking winners and losers without regard to the law. The lawsuit also says Clayton's motivation for charging Ripple and not Ethereum may be personal. Here we go. Since he left the SEC, he has become an advisor to One River Asset Management, which invests in Bitcoin and Ethereum's Ether cryptocurrency. Of course, Clayton, a longtime securities lawyer, wouldn't be the first government official to take advantage of the revolving door. Merely repping someone who owns Ether is a weak conflict at best. More troubling is the reckless Keystone Cops method the SEC is employing to regulate this crypto. Current chair Gary Gensler wants to crack down on crypto even harder than Clayton, even though the SEC's authority is limited based on current law, which means it needs to stretch to make cases, and as the SEC stretches, crypto business is looking for friendlier venues to operate. The people close to Ripple say their U.S. operations have stalled, but they're flourishing overseas. More unnerving, there is an easy solution offered by SEC Commissioner and industry advocate Hester Peirce that's being totally ignored by Gensler and company. Known as the Crypto Mom, Peirce is proposing a three-year moratorium on those random enforcement actions so the industry can catch its breath and innovate. Regulators and possibly Congress can create a new holistic approach to monitor the next internet before forcing it into the hands of the Chinese. As always, mother knows best. Very well said here in the community. We truly do appreciate Mr. Gasparino and the effort that he is putting forth to make sure that the information is getting out there, not just on Fox Business, but here in the New York Post. You know, these are real media outlets that can bring real attention to the problems that we're seeing from the SEC in the crypto space. And I like that the traction that he is getting here is, you know, having more of this impact on other outlets uh, starting to take notice. We saw Yahoo Finance the other day um, in a previous video and talked about that. So I hope that this information is helpful for you. Please do make sure that you're following him, uh, tweeting out to him, letting him know that this is something he should continue to cover, dig deeper into, get more information out to light because it's by getting the bigger media outlets to focus some attention on this will really get the action going and get the public more aware of just the shadiness of some of the actions happening behind the scenes and the lack of clarity that truly is still out there. If you found any value here, make sure to hit a like on your way out. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're coming up on the channel anniversary here, and I would love it if we could be at 15K by the time we get there. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and I will see you in the next one.